welcome back my name is pooja rawat and in today's session we are going to discuss whether a upsc aspirant can prepare for nabard simultaneously or not so a lot of students have this question in mind uh, whether they can go for this exam or choose this exam as an alternative or not so let me tell you after this session all your doubts are going to get resolved and you yourself can answer if this is a good, good alternative or not all right so let us uh, proceed further so before we start all those people who are here for the first time if you are watching this channel for the first time do subscribe it and press this bell icon so you don't miss on the latest updates you can uh, also download our app wherein you will get access to daily gk quizzes the exam updates topper strategy previous year questions and much more well you can also join our telegram group wherein uh, you will be uh, posted with the upcoming videos and the upcoming exam notifications all right so do join this telegram group now before we discuss the pattern or uh, the similarity or the overlapping of the syllabus between the nabard grade a and the nabard uh, the upsc let me tell you that nabard grade a also has three phases the exams conducted in three phases phase 1 your prelims phase 2 the mains and then it has the interview okay so similar to upsc uh, examination it also has three phases now talking about the phase 1 that is uh, the prelims one it has eight sections all right so it has reasoning decision making english computer knowledge quantitative aptitude general awareness economic and social issues and the agriculture and rural development so first five sections are qualifying in nature all right it is just qualifying in nature you only have to score minimum qualifying marks then the remaining three sections the general awareness economic and social issues and the ard that is the agriculture and rural development this is the one uh, which is counted for your merit so based on your score in these three sections and uh, the merit would be formed based on these sections only now if you are a upsc aspirant you must also be preparing for the csat paper in your prelims which is also qualifying in nature that you must be preparing about uh, these uh, re reasoning and the quant or english right so you are already preparing this यहाँ पे क्या है थोड़ा सा कंप्यूटर नॉलेज है बेसिक कंप्यूटर नॉलेज विच यू कैन इजीली अटेम्प्ट और आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन एंड मोर ओवर दिस इज ओनली क्वालिफाइंग इन नेचर दैट मींस यू ओनली हैव टू अटेन मिनिमम नंबर्स इन दिस सेक्शन सिमिलरली लास्ट ईयर दे इंट्रोड्यूस द डिसीजन मेकिंग विच हैज दीज आर दिन क्वेश्चन ऑफ वन मार्क ईच हेयर ऑल्सो यू ओनली हैव टू get the minimum marks so these are not very difficult you can easily score and clear the section uh, the topic of discussion should be ga esi and the ard now ga is all about your current affair theek hai jo monthly current affair aapka aata hai last one year ka current affair is something that you need to prepare for this exam jo ki aap already prepare kar rahe hain for your upsc right and we all know that no one can prepare current affair as well as a upsc aspirant does right so upsc aspirants is other current affair ko nahi padta but it's just like for this exam you have to pay a more attention to the facts right so facts jo hain appointments hain is tarike ki jo cheeze aati hain wo aapko thoda zyada yaad karne ki zarurat hai yahan pe so somehow you are preparing this general awareness economic and social issues is all about schemes the government schemes then you are already know the basics of economics kyun kyunki aap paper 3 ke liye economics padhte hain to you know the basics of economics uh, everything regarding that then social issues say you are already aware of you prepare this section very well prelims mein the questions are more over based on the schemes uh, their provisions right so this section you are already prepared now the next section is the ard which is something that most of the students have uh, trouble or concern theek hai ye wala section hai jo sabse zyada problem create karta hai majority of the students ke liye who are not from the agriculture background right if you are preparing for the upsc now this agriculture and rural development ka bhi hum will be uh, analyzing the entire syllabus of the agriculture and the rural development and you'll see that you already prepare 
50 to 60 percent of the syllabus uh, while you're preparing for UPSC. All right, so 50 to 60 percent syllabus overlaps with your current preparation. Moreover, ARD may out of 40 question, 15 to 20 question are dynamic in nature. Now, what do I mean by these questions are dynamic in nature? That means these questions are not from static agriculture or the rural development. Because static core is not technical questions. Here, 8 to 10 questions would be from the schemes. Schemes related to your agriculture or the rural development, Ministry of Agriculture, ki, Ministry of Rural Development, ki, jo bhi schemes hai, you have to prepare that. Then there would be questions from the census, the agriculture census, the livestock census. Then there would be questions from the reports, Indian State Forest Report, hai, Nabad ki Annual Report, hai, Nabad Annual Report that you need to prepare. Right, so these are the areas which you can easily prepare. It's not like ki isme bahut zada technical hai kuch bhi. You just uh, need to remember some facts or data or census and report. These census and reports you also uh, already prepare for your uh, UPSC also. Right, so 15 to 20 questions so dynamic hai. You are already uh, preparing this. Then the remaining 20s uh, core questions jo aate hai, static questions, uh, questions jo aate hai, usme se bhi Kai sare topics jo hai, you already prepare for your UPSC. We'll be discussing that in detail in the subsequent slides. All right. Now talking about the phase two. Phase two mein, there would be two paper. Paper one would be the descriptive English uh, writing. So English may you will have this essay writing that you already prepare. So paper one ke liye, you already prepare this essay. Uh, sorry, jo language cup exam hota hai. Then the comp comprehension, you know that uh, wo CSAT mein bhi aata hai. Then report writing, paragraph writing and letter writing is something that uh, you have to uh, devote some time, right? So it will hardly take your one week, one week and you can easily know how, you just need to know the structure of letter writing or the report writing, right? Otherwise you can uh, easily write uh, whatever they have been asking in the question. You just need to remember the structure of uh, these reports or these letters. So that you can easily cover in one week. Then the paper two would comprise of two parts. The first one is the objective. Uh, just my ESI and ARD aate. Again, ESI is all about the schemes and all. And then ARD mein aapke uh, thoda static question aega and thoda current affairs ka aega. Then the Another part in this exam or in this paper would be descriptive one. So out of six questions, you have to attempt four questions. So these questions, not all these questions are technical. For example, last year they have asked about the WTO and its functions. Because subsidies that you already know or you cover it in your economics. Economics may have organization per the WTO. Then they also asked about the micro irrigation. So micro irrigation you must be aware of. I think uh, you read that a uh, drip irrigation or sprinkler irrigation. So you can easily attempt that. So you can see that the questions are moreover generic in nature. It's a mix of mix of technical and generic. So for example, three questions are generic in nature, while the other three are uh, technical in nature. Then out of six questions, you only have to attempt four. That means those three generic questions you can easily answer. And for that one question. You have to read, right? You have to read um, the topics that are mentioned in your syllabus. And even if you don't read that, you don't cover that. Uh, trust me, you have high chances to clear this uh, phase. Because if you score good in uh, descriptive uh, paper one and you score well in the objective part and you uh, score mediocre mark in your uh, paper two, Right, objective नहीं मतलब कि अगर आप जो उसका subjective part है, descriptive part है, उसमें अगर mediocre marks भी achieve करते हैं, even then जो total होगा आपका, वो काफी better हो सकता है उन aspirants के comparison में who have a problem with writing, those who cannot write uh, properly, right? Most of the students who are not from the UPSC background, because UPSC student, who be serious uh, aspirant, hoga, they will be practice uh, practicing uh, writing practice. Unki kafi jada rehti hai na. Mains ke liye we practice a lot. So somehow the UPSC aspirant has a stronghold uh, whenever it comes to writing. So you have a great uh, 
I would say a benefit that you are preparing for UPSC and you also practicing writing, then you can easily score very well marks in the phase two. Now look at the syllabus of the agriculture or the Nabad grade A agriculture syllabus. They came. So the topics mentioned in the syllabus are the agriculture, the basics of agriculture. You already read in the environment. अगर आप environment के लिए शंकर आयस book follow कर रहे हैं तो उसका जो agriculture वाला part है पूरा chapter है उसमें you read about the basics of agriculture, the cropping system, these uh, uh, fertilizers है ना उसमें tilling वगैरह practices जो होती है वो सब कुछ हम पढ़ते हैं mulches, tillage क्या होता है, primary tillage क्या होता है, zero tillage क्या होता है the fertilizer you also read about the urea nitrogen fertilizers ke bare mein padhte hain to you already cover this then agronomy is something that you do not cover directly the classification of field crop you already know that uh, the classification based on the uh, climate for example temperate crops kya hoti hain tropical crops kya hoti hain what are the rabi crops kharif crops right you know that so field crops kya hoti hain or uh, what are the factors that affect crop production that you also know temperature kis tarike se field crop ko affect kar sakta hai crop production ko affect karta hai you can uh, easily understand that theek hai solar radiation kitna important hai uh, you know that theek hai ye sare factors hum geography mein bhi padhte hain ki crops ko kon kon se factors hain what are the biotic or abiotic factors that affects the vegetation jo aap vegetation mein padhe hain wahi yahan par hum क्रॉप्स के रिस्पेक्ट में पढ़ लें देन दी एग्रो क्लाइमेटिक जोन एग्रो क्लाइमेटिक जोन डायरेक्टली आपने इस तरीके से नहीं पढ़ा होगा कि प्लानिंग कमीशन ने इंडिया को फिफ्टीन एग्रो क्लाइमेटिक जोन में डिवाइड किया देन वी रीड अबाउट ऑल द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ दैट रीजन द वेजिटेशन ऑफ दैट रीजन द इम्पॉर्टेंट क्रॉप्स दैट दीज पीपल आर ग्रोइंग द टाइप ऑफ सॉइल दैट वी कैन फाइंड द राइट एंड वट आर द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ दैट रीजन बट सम हाउ यू रीड अबाउट ऑल दीज जोन्स क्योंकि यू ऑल्सो रीड दैट कि किस एरिया में किस टाइप का वेजिटेशन होता है वेन यू रीड अबाउट द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ वेजिटेशन देन आप कोपन क्लासिफिकेशन पढ़ते हैं यू रीड अबाउट द क्लाइमेटिक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन यू रीड अबाउट द वेजिटेशन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑल ओवर इंडिया राइट टू समहाउ यू आर रीडिंग अबाउट दैट देन द क्रॉपिंग सिस्टम क्रॉपिंग सिस्टम में वही आता है आपका सब इंटर क्रॉपिंग स्ट्रिप क्रॉपिंग ठीक है पैलल क्रॉपिंग जो कि आप एग्रीकल्चर में शंकर आयस में पढ़ते हैं Then the problems of dryland agriculture. Dryland agriculture, uh, जो जिसने भी geography पढ़ी होगी उसने dryland agriculture के बारे में पढ़ा होगा. The seed uh, production and precision farming is something that uh, a UPSC aspirant does not cover. The organic farming, uh, you read about that. The ecology and environment, you read a whole book of Shankar Ayers on this topic. Then the soil science and conservation, you have a, a topic in the geography, soil science. what are the different types of soils that we found in india what are their problem kaun se nutrient usme milta hai kis kaun se nutrient mein they are poor theek hai kaun se nutrient mein deficiency hai the conservation problem of soil what are the different conservative measures that we can apply to conserve the soil right you also cover that then the animal husbandry and fishery is something that you don't read then so again irrigation so you know that Uh, types of irrigation directly nahi padhte hain but you read about the micro irrigation right so micro irrigation ke bare mein padhte hain then watershed ke bare mein padhte hain what is the watershed watershed management kya hote hain command areas kya hote hain we read about that command areas command area development kya hote hain so we read about that theek hai water resources kya hai irrigation ke tank irrigation kya hota hai canal irrigation kya hota hai you already know about that then the horticulture is and plantation is something that you don't read forestry is something that you already read about this so forestry may uh, you read about the type of forest that in uh, we have in india then you also read about all the laws and legislations uh, that are there with relate to uh, related to forest management it also covers climate change uh, you already uh, know about the climate change you read about that This agriculture engineering is something that you don't cover. Then agrometrology, be uh, you cover that. Because agrometrology, maybe we have. What do we do? We uh, talk about the atmosphere, the atmosphere composition, the different layers of atmosphere, cloud formation, types of cloud, right? And there are few topics that you don't read in. 
UPSC syllabus जो that are not there in UPSC syllabus. So काफी चीजें काफी topics तो हैं जो overlap कर रहे हैं already. So I think you can easily analyze कि agriculture का अगर syllabus देखें तो 50% तो आप cover कर ही रहे हैं कहीं ना कहीं UPSC की preparation में while you're covering your uh, ecology or environment while you're covering the entire geography. So have you have this dedicated chapter on the soil or vegetation or the forest. ठीक है तो आप कहीं ना कहीं ये सब कवर कर रहे हैं दैट मीन्स कि वाइल यूर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर यू पी एस सी यूर ऑलरेडी कवरिंग फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द एग्रीकल्चर सिलेबस राइट सो यू नीड नॉट टू फेयर अबाउट दिस एग्जाम नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द रूरल डेवलपमेंट का सिलेबस द सेक्शन इज एग्रीकल्चर एंड रूरल डेवलपमेंट नाउ द नबार्ड हैज स्पेसिफिकली मैंशन फ्यू टॉपिक्स इन द रूरल डेवलपमेंट एरिया तो फर्स्ट दे टॉक अबाउट द रूरल इकोनॉमी रूरल एरिया क्या होते हैं उसका इंपॉर्टेंस क्या है ठीक है वट आर द इकोनॉमिक सोशल एंड डिमोग्राफिक कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ द इंडियन रूरल इकोनॉमी देन दे ऑल्सो मैंशन दिस पी आर आई पंचायती राज इंस्टीट्यूशन विच इज अ पार्ट ऑफ पेपर टू इन द यू पी एस सी सिलेबस देन दे टॉक अबाउट द रूरल डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम्स क्या है दीज आर द गवर्नमेंट स्कीम्स दैट यू प्रिपेयर फॉर पेपर थ्री राइट देन रूरल क्रेडिट सिस्टम ये आप इकोनॉमिक स्किल में पढ़ते हैं अपना पेपर थ्री के लिए राइट right? Financial institutions, role and function. This is also covered under economy. The regulatory body. Uh, you must be reading about that. So micro finance, micro credit, rural credit. You must be uh, reading about that also in economy. Then the rural population. Rural population means nothing but how the rural workforce is changing. So this is also something that you read uh, while you uh, prepare your social development or social issues. Like how. what are the trends in the workforce of the rural uh, area what are the problems of the rural areas and the issues and challenges in rural industry right so you already cover all these things i think after this session uh, since we have an analyzed the entire syllabus of the nabard agriculture and rural development section uh, in which most of the students face trouble i think one thing that you have realized is these topics are not too technical to understand anyone can read this topic can understand this topic and the questions are also not that difficult if you look into the previous year question papers you would easily analyze and you could easily uh, deduce that uh, these questions are not difficult and you can easily attempt it if you have a smart strategy right if you are a upsc aspirant smart Uh, you have to adopt a smart strategy you have to devote a one or two hours of your entire day to this nabard preparation and you can easily crack this right we have analyzed phase 1 phase 2 and let me tell you that nabard notification will come in one or two months that means you also have sufficient time in your hand if you are preparing for uh, next year or you uh, somehow could not clear this prelims then this is a golden opportunity for you so nabard is a very prestigious organization it's also working at the grassroots level for the rural people so somehow it's also going to fulfill your aspiration of uh, of working in the rural development area or working at the grassroots level touching the life of the people so you can easily do that right uh, i hope all your doubts or all your confusions uh, must have been resolved after this session in case you still have uh, any question or any doubt related to uh, this topic uh, you can uh, post your question on the comment right and i'll see you in the next session till then keep working hard and keep smiling